As advances in medical science are made, there are bound to be a few missteps, especially when it comes to prescription drugs. While drugs do undergo a rigorous testing process, these tests remain limited in a few ways. First, long-term effects are often unable to be determined, as it is unlikely that a pharmaceutical company would be willing to endure decades of clinical trials per drug. Second, initial testing is mostly done under very controlled settings, and the results of these limitations means that sometimes a drug slips through that really shouldn't have. Well over 100 medications have been withdrawn from use for causing problems such as addiction and withdrawal, organ failure, toxicity, and even death. One such drug was desomorphine, a semi-synthetic opioid that was first discovered in Germany in the 1920s, but not commercialized until the 1930s by a pharmaceutical company in Switzerland. Desomorphine was designed as an alternative to morphine. It was more potent and faster acting, and was also mostly free of the nausea that was associated with morphine. The only immediate apparent downside was that the pain relief didn't last as long, so more doses would need to be administered. At first, it seemed like it could be a great replacement for morphine and medicinal pain relief, but it didn't take very long for rather serious side effects to kick in. Negative side effects such as low blood pressure, urinary retention, and severe breathing problems were occurring at an extremely high rate. The medication had only made it as far as Switzerland and Russia before it was shelved completely in 1981. So, commercially manufactured desomorphine might have gone away, but unfortunately the existence of the chemical compound was now known. And where it goes is a dark path. Russia's illicit opioid scene was largely dominated by heroin imported from Afghanistan. There was a severe drop in the amount of heroin being imported to Russia between 2002 and 2003, likely related to the United States invasion of Afghanistan. With the decrease of actual heroin on the streets, the Russian drug users began turning to homemade options for their opioid usage instead. The first reports of homemade desomorphine came out of Siberia in 2002, where the homemade version had acquired the colorful nickname of Crocodile. The most widely accepted origin of this name comes from the effects seen at the injection site of the drug. The injection sites often covered in sores, gangrene, and necrosis that take on the strange visual appearance of a crocodile's scales. The necrosis can actually become so severe that the skin and the flesh is going to fall off, revealing exposed bone, which gives crocodile its other nickname, the flesh-eating drug. These symptoms sound nothing like that of the medicinal grade desomorphine, which was already dangerous enough, but it is the homemade nature of crocodile that makes it much more deadly than the purer medicinal version. While most countries required a prescription for medications containing codeine in Russia, codeine was available over the counter until 2012 when it was made prescription only in response to the high usage of crocodile among its citizens. And these codeine tablets were the key ingredient in manufacturing homemade desomorphine, which was incredibly cheap and easy to do. It was so easy that the process could be done in under an hour. Other ingredients used in the manufacturing of crocodile were also cheap and readily available. Ingredients like paint thinner, gasoline, iodine, and red phosphorus from match tips were used to perform the chemical reactions. Not only do these reactants contain dangerous and toxic impurities, but the byproducts of the chemical reactions also do. It also caused crocodile to have a pH of 3, something roughly as acidic as orange juice or vinegar. Drinking orange juice? Obviously fine, your stomach is well equipped to deal with acid, but injecting something of that pH into your body completely unfiltered is much more dangerous. Removing all of the impurities from the resulting solution would take time and thus increase the price, and most people manufacturing crocodile were unlikely to have the knowledge or skills required to do so anyway. Now they were aware of the issues with the substance's pH, so to try and decrease the acidity they'd often add things like cigarette ash or bicarbonate salt to the formula. Now while those are both alkaline, neither is strong enough to raise the pH above 3, so the manufacturers were just needlessly adding more impurities into the formula. With how quickly the effects of crocodile wear off, many addicts were also taking to cooking it themselves because of how easy the process is. Given the increased sense of urgency in a person trying to avoid withdrawal, taking time to remove toxic impurities becomes even less of a priority. Studies of crocodile samples purchased on the streets of Russia showed that, at best, they were only 75% desomorphine, with some samples containing only trace amounts of the synthetic drug. The other 25% or more that users were injecting themselves with was nothing but a cocktail of various toxins with severe side effects on the body. These effects were not limited to just the injection site either. Not only could the obvious effects to the skin occur on parts of the body far away from the injection site, but crocodile can also cause damage to the entire system of blood vessels, as well as muscle damage, bone damage, and 
even multiple organ failure. Now, all opioids are obviously dangerous and lead to a dramatically shortened lifespan, but the average lifespan of a person after taking their first dose of crocodile is two years. There are a number of factors contributing to this beyond just the toxic impurities from shoddy manufacturing. The overwhelming majority of crocodile addicts in Russia identified themselves as having been former heroin addicts. When the supply of Afghan heroin dried up, prices for genuine heroin increased dramatically, while crocodile was available for dramatically less. This made it an extremely attractive alternative for addicts trying to avoid becoming dope sick. A big problem with that is both the increased potency and shorter lasting effects of crocodile. Addicts tend to know their dosage pretty well. When introduced to a replacement drug like Crocodile, they would be inclined to start with their normal dose, despite the fact that Crocodile is four to five times more potent than heroin. It's similar to what is causing so many deaths from fentanyl, which is up to 50 times more potent than heroin, although in the case of fentanyl, the problem is made even worse, as many users aren't even aware that that's the drug that they've been given instead of heroin. Though Crocodile users seem to be aware of what they're taking, they may not be aware of the increased potency. And even if they are, the shorter duration means that they will need to take Crocodile more often to avoid withdrawal. Higher potency plus more frequent injections is a guaranteed recipe for an increase in levels of addiction. And when that addiction is to a substance that is at least 25% paint thinner and gasoline, it's also a guaranteed recipe for death. The high levels of iodine can cause thyroid disorders. The heavy metals cause damage to the central nervous system and can impede speech and motor skills. The contaminated red phosphorus can cause damaged cartilage and bones. And of course, there's also the necrosis where the drug is injected. What makes this particularly deadly is that those in active addiction are often hesitant to seek medical attention until things become extremely serious. In the case of Crocodile, by the time things are serious, it's usually already in the late stages of tissue damage and will almost certainly end with severe mutilation, amputation, even death. Now, as we stated earlier, production of Crocodile began in Russia in response to a shortage of heroin and because of the easy availability of over-the-counter codeine. In the 20 years since its production began, it fortunately hasn't spread too far. The majority of Crocodile users are in Russia and Ukraine, though it has been making its way across Europe. Countries like Kazakhstan, the Czech Republic, Germany, Georgia, France have reported the use of Crocodile and the associated injuries that result. To date, there have not been any confirmed cases of crocodile use making it to North America. There are several reports of people admitted to the hospital who claim to have been using crocodile, but their injuries have been more consistent with heroin use, so it's unknown whether or not the deadly drug has made landfall in North America yet. Worldwide, it's estimated that there are between 100,000 and 200,000 crocodile users. One of the biggest hurdles to eliminating its use entirely is that Russia, the main source of crocodile, has banned opioid substitution treatments. Though harm reduction approaches might not be a perfect solution, and they do remain controversial in many parts of the world, the extremely addictive and deadly nature of crocodile is going to require attention sooner rather than later.